So this is the fabulous Alucup rooftop conversion. From all rooftop conversions on the market that I've um, researched, I think this is by far the best one and the most complete one. It's quite light, lightweight because it's all aluminium, even the, uh, these uh, uh, panels where you put the mattress on. Another thing that Alucup did right is that you can get inside the, the tent from inside the car which is not so common <coughs> and you can stand in the car if you flip it up. Uh, regarding the weight I believe it is lighter by quite a bit compared to the original roof uh, plus roof rack plus uh, rooftop tent. So th I think the whole, uh, I didn't weigh it, but the whole um, rooftop conversion is about 100 kilograms uh, is my guesstimate. The good thing about it is also that it's much stiffer and much stronger. So while this does not mean that it's already a roll cage, of course, uh, I think you could somehow turn it into a, a roll cage. And that's the thing that I would really love to see from Alucap. If they come up with an additional roll cage set for the Defender that integrates with its rooftop conversion, because that could be really a win-win situation where you have a, a better roof that's stiffer already because of this uh, frame-like uh, construction and have a good support for the uh, especially B and, and C pillar. Another nice feature is uh, that all the lights are included already, also the in lights inside the rooftop tent. And they're already wired, so you just have to connect the wires to the power supply. That's fairly simple. But still, again, I would expect uh, to have a small manual where you have two, three sentences uh, stating that what you're doing, especially if you order such a thing uh, to, uh, to have an estimate if you're able to install the roof or not. It's particularly nice, I believe, is the console that you have on top of the windscreen that's supplied with the rooftop conversion. Uh, unfortunately, Alucap has not provided us with a manual. We had to do it ourselves and we were persistently asking Alucap since we ordered it half a year ago for a manual. Ideally something like Frontrunner provides, which is uh, a multi-page uh, PDF normally with detailed descriptions, which bolts to use and so on. Where you cannot use the original uh, brackets and bolts what to do because it's quite crucial to fit this roof properly since they're, it's a heavier than the original roof. Why I'm saying this is because, for instance, in the US, in the United States, uh, it is mandatory to fit it with a roll cage and every defender owner knows why this uh, rule applies because uh, in case of a rollover the, the car, the roof simply crushes much more than with any other car. That's one thing. The other thing that's uh, not so understood maybe, except by one producer of uh, rooftop conversions in Germany that I know I'm aware of, is that the attachment points here for the seat belts here and here uh, will experience very high forces uh, during an impact or a crash. So the load experience on this point is very high and therefore the connection point to the roof here of the especially the very weak um, B pillar needs to be very strong because the, everything will depend on these currently four bolts that hold it on the, on the roof. That's one thing. Um, another thing is that this one German um, producer of rooftop, rooftop conversions um, what he did is basically fabricate a, a, a bracket, an aluminium bracket that uh, goes from here and goes inside the B-pillar and is, is attached inside the B-pillar. So that would be something great to have. Um, I can show it from the inside again. So basically what I would expect, this is the, the attachment point for the awning by the way. What I would expect is to have a bra an aluminium bracket that is roughly T-shaped. Uh, going from here into the B pillar, maybe replacing this part or, or going over the B pillar and being bolted down here and the same with the, with the C pillar. Uh, so if Alucap could manage to produce something like this, I would be much more happy with the 
um, load distribution of the rooftop uh, onto the car. But let's start at the beginning now at the real rooftop installation. So I've just taken off the interior panels uh, and I'm removing now the electrical wires. They're clipped onto the roof at various places. Uh, after that I will loosen all the boards here that attach the roof uh, to the body of the car. There are some bigger boards in the corner brackets for the pillars and the ordinary boards are these M6 I believe. This is the rear washer pipe. The rear door, we pull off the sealant on the ceiling on the top a bit. On the top of the front window, you have these little brackets here that fit in. On the B pillar, there is there are four screws, and then there is a little little nifty little nifty bracket. You can see it moving now. So uh, this is the bracket. You can indeed remove it. Uh, by sliding it forward so it's basically in here and you have the welded in nuts quite convenient and since the B post I think is one of the most important to carry the roof I, I hope we will use that as well in order to release the rear part of the roof we just remove the gasket the rear door and, and this is the C pillar and the bolt require a number 8 wrench and I can't really reach them with the power tool properly and there's a bracket here but there seems to be no bracket on top and also on the C pillar there's a large bracket like this on top. This bunch of screws is all that keeps the roof on top of the car and I slowly begin to understand that there are indeed people who take off the roof for a long summer weekend. So just unpacked the rooftop conversion. Now we are going to strip out weight as much as possible at least the mattresses heavy weights and the other thing that we do is we remove these panels here that's not what Cup told us we had to find out ourselves and we have to drill the holes also along this part here so at the rear end this uh, profile for the sealant is already attached uh, for the both front doors it's not yet there so taking off the panels these are rib nuts so you don't you won't lose the nuts and that's actually the place where the counter nuts go and the roof goes uh, the, the side of the car goes here And that's by the way also the area where most of the cables and the washer pipe goes to the back so it's nicely hidden. And this is now the rear end which we take off as well. These are actually made of thin aluminium and they're powder coated it looks like.
so you have the this profile here to add, attach the gaskets and uh, Alucap has provided a couple of weird looking aluminium pieces that will be bolted at the very end under the car also not shown on their so called manual so conveniently there are some helpers arriving and uh, one Swiss supervisor <laughs> Yeah, it's quite simple. Originally there is no silicone on this, but you see there's dust coming in, so I will put some silicone on. And now we have taken off the original roof. Nice, huh? Wie viele Leute glaubst du brauchen wir, um das neu drauf zu heben? It took us about eight to nine people to lift on the new rooftop conversion. There's a nice detail, for instance, these springs that uh, initiate the lift up of the rooftop. They have uh, like a small rubber coating. Not quite sure what this is for. This is certainly for the table to lock it after sliding in. And these parts seem to be for the awning. Have to adapt, adapt the brackets <coughs> for the rivnet of the uh, covering L profiles. <coughs> this is the front, and here you have the rivnet that uh, needs to be clear. <laughs> Drilling the holes here. I think I have to remove this cover as well. So I took off the seat belt, the rear seat belt that I don't need anymore. Unfortunately, Alucap has in this rooftop model uh, put this support column here. So it's uh, not possible to use the original hole here to support this uh, corner here and I drilled another hole there for an M8 bolt. Uh, anyways I think uh, this whole pillar needs a lot of support and it's good to have uh, enough bolts here. Uh, another thing on this side that's the C column is that the, the original bracket here does not fit anymore so I used clipped off pieces of it and used it as uh, nuts. It would otherwise be good to have these uh, square nuts that kind of lock themselves in if you place them close enough to an L profile like this one. So uh, since it's very fiddly to insert normal lock nuts behind this um, U profile I would suggest you get some of these uh, square nuts and use some uh, lock nut glue because they will just drop in like this and if you tighten the screw from below most screws are actually very close to the uh, rim here anyways like this one for instance so it's not a problem using these and uh, you have much less hassle inserting a wrench behind this thing here so i managed to uh, get the old bracket in here into the b pillar and at least attach these two screws with uh, an additional nut behind them as a spacer uh, but for here the hole is uh, not at the right spot so i will drill through and uh, put a nut in inside here I think Alucap needs to modify this whole thing uh, because the uh, heavy bracket or some sort of support needs to be uh, in here to support the B pillar. To keep the doors open, uh, better get one of these front runner door open straps. They're quite amazing, come in the exact right length and help to keep your Land Rover door open. We are riveting on the L profiles that Alucard provided 
before the uh, gaskets that go over the door and seal the door against the roof. I look up things there are four screws or six screws basically and the uh, main window is enough. But since Land Rover uh, originally used eight screws including these ones uh, I'm drilling two more. Here, and I'm here using stop nuts, uh, lock nuts. It's on top of the original nuts. I used some lock nuts in case uh, corrugated road rattles off the windshield. So this is the overhead console uh, where the uh, two sun visors are mounted. Uh, here comes the rear view mi mirror goes into the original socket that's still on the uh, windscreen and here I have a small fuse box because there's basically um, one cable supplied by um, alloy cap for all the lighting in the car and that's just with uh, plus and minus so there's no switched power that can switch it on when the doors are opened or closed so what I will do now is the following. So this is where the uh, console goes and um, I will have on the B column I will have uh, a six square millimeter uh, power supply coming up going here and here sits the fuse box then on the console which will supply power for eventually a small radio here for the dash cam uh, and for a big USB hub that features six or so USB uh, charging stations uh, among others for the GPS which will be sitting here on a small RAM mount ball joint. So there's a USB cable, cable coming to the uh, GPS and uh, it's also supplying the power supply for the whole roof lighting. All these roofs supplied by Alucap, uh, all these lights supplied by Alucap, also the lights inside the roof, yeah, rooftop tent. And that will be fused by, I believe it was uh, 15 amps or so. So this is the other side, the right driver's side. Uh, what I basically tend to do after some pondering is have two light circuits. So I will still use the original plug unaltered, switch it into the uh, roof harness that's still there that will run here uh, and I will have the old uh, roof lights cut out of the panels and uh, place them here on some brackets especially for the uh, rear seat and the trunk so when you open the door you can uh, you still have a light switching on automatically and then I have from this fuse box on the left here I have an own power supply from the auxiliary battery that will supply all these um, lights supplied by Alucap, these uh, white and red colored lights. So you can read for long hours without draining the starter battery. So the point is simply to, to leave the original circuit here that goes through this unaltered. Do not tap into this, do not fiddle with the original wiring which is always a good thing and do all my own wiring essentially from the auxiliary battery that is not so crucial, it's not the starter battery, it's not connected to it. Yeah, so all the cables will be hidden here behind the console, the console comes out here. So I will use uh, this rivet to uh, attach the console and then drill another, put another uh, rift nut here and maybe eventually also uh, two bolts here that I use to uh, attach the console. So we have put the old wiring loom with some cable ties uh, on the side of this panel here uh, and cover plates like this, this is for the rear, uh, will be covering the cable loom of on both sides and also on the rear side. Uh, here we still have the old wires for the old lights, left and right, and there's another one in front for the uh, alarm system sensor that still stays still in place. And we will have the old lights positioned here 
inserted in these panels so that they switch on when the door opens. Here we attach the work light, goes through a grommet uh, and to the auxiliary battery and this is the sprinkler for the rear window. Originally it was on top but there's enough, not enough space so we positioned it here uh, and this is the tube for it runs along here to the front to the A-pillar. We're now fastening the cover plate, the first one for the rear. So this is the first cover panel on the side. I had to cut out a piece here for the B column and the cable is coming through here for the sensor. So this is the console. Uh, here we have the 6 mm square millimeter cables that connect to the auxiliary battery, fuse box, uh, earth point. Um, already connected is a light here on the front of the console, this one. Here you have the uh, RAM mount for the GPS. Uh, the cable from the GPS is coming through here. Here goes the mirror. Okay, and another thing is um, I added these 6 mm bolts here that go through the original holes, two of the original holes in the window screen and they basically hold the, this console um, vertically because otherwise it would be only attached here through these three points on the side. <laughs> 